So I want to uh, welcome you guys to another episode of the Portrait Profit Show uh, that is brought to you by Digital Pro Lab and Landers Photography School. Uh, we every week are bringing something to you every single Monday something that's going to uplift the photographer community uh, and help us become better photographers, both to our clients and to ourselves and to our art. And when we uplift, when we are keep, when we continue to grow, we're helping out the photography community. We're not only helping out ourselves, we're helping out everyone. When we learn a little something more about photography, when we learn how to sell, when we learn how to price, when we learn how to do our customers right, the best possible way, not just the ideas that we have in our head because there's so much more to learn out there. When we uplift ourselves, we uplift the entire photography community. And we believe that all of us, every single one who wants to be a portrait photographer can actually make a living doing this if they want to. That doesn't mean it's easy. What is? There's a lot of hard stuff out there. At least you could be doing the thing that you love doing, portraits. When we price it correctly, we have the ability to make a living doing this. There's enough room for everyone. That's Jim's opinion. That's my opinion. But I think a lot of people share it. And the more you learn about photography and the business side of photography, I think the more you'll agree with that statement. So once again, thank you for being here at this episode of the Portrait Profit Show. Today, we're going to be talking about the uh, after the product sale. So once we have sold the prints, what happens next is what we're going to be talking about today. But before we do that, um, I want to uh, uh, have Javi Valdez from Digital Pro Lab come on and share a little bit about what, what uh, Digital Pro Lab does. Again, this is something that is brought to you at no cost whatsoever, but it is sponsored by two companies, Landers Photography School, me, and Digital Pro Lab. So Javi, do you have a few words to share? Yeah, thank you, Jim. Um, yeah, like, like Jim was saying, you know, we, uh, we do this every week, uh, you know, for the upliftment of, of the photography community here in San Antonio, Texas. Um, you know, obviously we're a photo lab here in town. So, um, you know, we work with a ton of local photographers um, and, you know, we know how, how, how difficult, you know, the past, you know, 18 months or so has been for, for everybody. Um, and so bringing content like this that can help, uh, you know, really uh, you know, bolster everyone's business uh, is something that we really, really love. Um, you know, we also want to be a resource for everybody, you know, even outside of printing. So uh, whether it be, uh, you know, putting people in contact with each other, um, you know, being able to give a good recommendation on a, a studio that they need for renting or, or whatever it might be. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of connections over here and we've got a lot of uh, resources that we can put you in contact with. Um, you know, and so I think Amanda and Ray, our owners, have, have really doubled down on that um, aspect of, of helping out the community this year. So, um, you know, just as an example, last, uh, I believe it was last week, uh, there was a, a street photography show uh, down at Brigitte Blue Star. I'm not sure if anybody uh, here was able to attend that, but uh, it was a pretty big show. There was about uh, 35 photographers there, um, you know, all displaying their work, um, framed, printed, uh, printed work that was for sale. Uh, you know, we were able to reach out to uh, the majority of them uh, and, and let them know, hey, you know, if, if y'all need help with prints, uh, you know, we're your local lab, we're, we're here to help you. Um, you know, we had a lot of people that needed some last minute prints that we were able to help out that, that maybe wouldn't have gotten done, uh, you know, if you were going through, you know, uh, you know, a, a non-local lab or something like that. And so uh, we were able to help them out, uh, let them know that we have a, a pro price catalog um, that's going to be geared more towards professionals who know what they're doing. Um, and that actual catalog is something that I would really recommend a lot of, of you uh, be on if you are, uh, you know, tuning into Portrait Profits. I'm assuming uh, that you're in some capacity trying to make a go of, of monetizing your photography. Uh, and hopefully you're doing that with printing. Um, you know, we have obviously all the pricing is going to be online. Um, that's really more retail gear pricing. We have a, a separate catalog. Uh, that's actually priced a lot more competitively um, that we, you know, put all of our professionals on or even our, you know, uh, professional hobby, I mean, or even our, you know, more serious hobbyists, uh, anybody who just knows, uh, you know, what they want out of a print, uh, you know, shoot me a message, you know, I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, 
like I said, the, the pricing you see online uh, is more geared towards the retail market. And so we do have a catalog that's a lot more competitively priced that I would love to get a lot of you guys on uh, to make sure that you're maximizing those profit margins whenever you're uh, sitting down and, and, and talking to your customers. You can factor in the pricing, um, you know, we can go over pricing, um, all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, you know, Jim, thank you for, for having me. Thank you for letting me speak for a little bit. Of course. Definitely. We uh, definitely appreciate all those who uplift the photography community and Digital Pro Lab is, an, is a great example of that. And so we appreciate uh, Digital Pro Lab and, and you, Javi, as, as a representative of Digital Pro Lab. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, uh, Janice, yes, I, I can do that. Um, let's see. Okay. Yeah, I can send you that. Um, send your, Jenna, send your email the, uh, oh, okay. uh, um, in the chat and hopefully I'll remember to do that at the end. I, I won't be able to stop and do that right now though. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Let me pin. There we go. Is Janus looking for the handout? Yes. In fact, if, if one of you guys could send it to her, she put her email. email there. Yeah. Thank you. What? Thanks, Miguel. I, I appreciate it? that. I don't see it. Oh, it's it is there. Um, oh, it's because it's sent to just me. Okay. She took she sent it to everybody, okay. so now I you have it. it. <laughs> I got it. Thanks, Janice. And I have I have you on a a um, uh, a call a private session later on today. Is that right? For the E three program. Yes, that's correct, Jim. Hey, good. I'm glad. Uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, um, we, every year we uh, once a year we do this. We don't do this all year long, uh, but we have a program called E three, and this is for photographers who are serious and actually want to make a living with photography. This is a nine week, eighteen hour class. It's eight. It's two hours every single week. It's in fact, it's on the the, the Tuesday, six to eight in the evening, for for uh, for eight, for nine consecutive Tuesdays, beginning in 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 May. So it's three weeks, two weeks, something like that away. I think it's two weeks away. From the two weeks tomorrow, uh, and, and so there you you have to uh, you have to apply for this. It, just paying doesn't get you in. You have to apply for this. In fact, let me uh, show you the the place where you apply. Uh, right here, and I will get that address i'll put the address in the uh, in the chat uh francis is already in she's here with us today francis is already in miguel was was in it last year uh and anyone who's taken it before is welcome to take it again uh, and i don't charge to come back I, a refresher is is valuable in my opinion very valuable so let me copy that and put that Again, that's the E3 program. It's called E. It's short for Elite Three, Elite Three, and that's because the very first three people that took the class, I called them my Elite Three, and I just decided to, to call the class that. But again, you have to sign up for an interview. Now, the interview is lightweight. It's just talking about you, what you want to accomplish, and if this is the right tool for you. And if it's not the right tool for you, guess what? it's fine. It's not a problem. We just don't continue with it. Uh, the last two people I, I spoke with, um, one of them was just curious. Uh, I, I think that they actually knew someone who they were going to share it with. Uh, the other one, they just weren't qualified for it yet, but I did give them some good pointers on, on what to do next. So, uh, and, uh, and this will be very valuable to them. And I believe that they'll probably do it in 2022. It's, it's uh, May of every single year that we begin it. 
Uh, and, uh, and if you're not able to be in every class, by the way, it's, by, it's via Zoom, just like we're doing right now. And uh, we record those. So if you can't make one, you can watch it. If you want to review a class, you can watch it later. Not a problem. Uh, but uh, the E3 class is for, for serious photographers who, who really do want to make a good strong income, whether that's full-time or part-time with photography. And I specialize in low volume portrait photography. So therefore I'm talking one or two a week, maybe three or four a month, bringing you in a full-time income. Yeah. So uh, we're, we're, we're not talking about a hundred dollar sessions because a hundred dollar sessions doesn't really matter how many of those you do. You're very unlikely to make a profit. You'd have to do a huge number before it started making a profit. And, and most of us will never reach those kind of numbers as far as volume. But you can make a really good living with photography. Look into the E3 program. I mean, does it hurt to look into it? Of course not. So take a look at the E3 program. There's, there's a little bit to learn here and uh, you can uh, read through this. It's short. You don't want to miss this program. Yes, it's a certificate program. You did, do get a certificate at the end of this program. Um, here's some comments about what some past students have said. Uh, but uh, bottom line, just fill out this form right over here on the side and sign up for a, a session. Uh, and it's free. We just talk about who you are, where you're headed, and if this is the right tool for you. If it is, great. If it's not, great. Both outcomes are great. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. That's the E3 program. And those of you who are on Zoom, you see this, uh, this link here on Zoom. And uh, I guess, Miguel, if you don't mind putting that on the, uh, in the comment section on, on the Facebook page too, if you don't mind. All right. Yeah, I'll get it. Thanks. Appreciate that. Uh, Janice, you should have the email, by the way. Thanks for doing that too, Miguel. All right. Yes, I just checked and I got it. Thank you so much. Yay. Teamwork. All right, so I, I just noticed that the uh, the version that I sent out to you guys on uh, here on Zoom doesn't say after the product sale in this section of the handout, uh, but that's what it's supposed to say. So so uh, you know if there's a, if mistakes mean that it, it is more valuable, then you you have a, a version that's more valuable. <laughs> uh, we're talking about after the product sale. We're gonna be talking about steps. We're gonna be talking about follow-up. We're gonna talk about packaging. We're gonna talk about delivery. We're gonna be going to be talking about the installation of prints. Now, I'm gonna give you a little yeah. bit about, the, about my philosophy on uh, what you're supposed to do as a photographer. Now, when I say what you're supposed to do, I'm not saying that if you don't do what I'm saying, you're doing it wrong, that's crazy. We all do it the way that we feel is best. We just have to continuously work on what's best and not get into a rut, but constantly be improving our product. What you feel is best for you and your clients is, that's great. What I feel is best for my clients, that's the best and that's great. This is just offering one more point of view. But when it comes to after the product sale or photography in general, I feel like photography as a professional needs to be done like other professions where we complete the job, where we're not giving them more work to do. And what I mean by not giving more work to do is when we give someone digital files and they have intentions of printing it later, we are giving them more work to do. When we give them prints and they have intentions of installing it on their wall. We've given them more work to do. In my opinion, as a professional, you give your client no more work to do. It's in your purview. If it, it, It's in the, the range of what a professional does to complete whatever job it is. 
so that there's no more work for the client to do. Now, I know there's times, I know there's many folks, photographers who've never really thought about it this way before, and that's fine. You're not doing it wrong. You just may not have thought about it this way before. And even after you think about it, you might not choose to do it, but at least be open to an idea that you hadn't heard of before or a different way of doing it. I like to give an example of other businesses who would never not complete the work, at least not that I'm aware of. And the example I give most often and I've given several times on, on uh, Portrait Profits episodes is a roofer. Now, a roofer is not an artist. Maybe they think they are, but I'm picturing them not as being in the artist category. Therefore, I think we should actually care more as what the comparison is there, but a roofer. A roofer does not say, you know how to use a hammer, so therefore I'm not going to finish the job. You know how to use a hammer, you know how to use nails. So therefore I'll take the old roof off for you and haul it away. And then I'll leave all the packages of shingles And I'm going to give you a bag of nails for free and say, have fun. You know how to use a hammer. Make sure you tell all my friends, your friends about me. Roofers don't have that kind of level of integrity. They would never do such a thing. In fact, they'd wind up on troubleshooters on the news if they tried to pull that. So why are we photographers getting away without completing the job? We shouldn't be. Now, what does completing the job mean? Because it means different things at different times. It doesn't always necessarily mean a print on someone's wall. If someone's getting a business portrait for their LinkedIn profile, then a digital file is done, especially if you size it for them. So it's ready to go. But with a portrait session, one that's going to wind up on the wall, potentially. A family portrait session? Newborn? High school senior? In my opinion, done is when it's enjoyed on their wall. So therefore, I feel like, like that's part of the deal. So that's one of the things we're going to be talking about today is completing the job. Now, let me share my handout with you again. And this, uh, those of you here are here on Zoom, you're seeing this, you've got this on, on your own computer screen. Those of you who are on Facebook are only seeing the handout because it's being shared right now. After the product sale, your client has ordered, now what? In this next box, I want to point out a philosophy, my opinion. At every stage of the client's sales process, you get the opportunity to continue and enhance a strong working relationship and give them the best possible portrait experience. But, that's, but, but not only that, it's essential for your creative process. When things go according to plan, everything just feels right and you produce your best results. I want you to always remember, and if you've heard me speak before, you've heard me say these words, custom portraiture is a collaborative work between you and your clients. Custom portraiture is a collaborative work between you and your clients. Many sessions isn't custom portraiture. Yes, you created it yourself most likely, but you're doing the same thing for multiple clients. Nothing's different. The faces change the lighting, the background, the props, whatever it is you're using, those remain the same. So therefore not custom, not customized to an individual family, an individual high school senior. Custom portraiture is a collaborative work between you and your clients, meaning you aren't the only artist. They are too. You're working together to create this work of art. Custom portraiture is a collaborative work between you and your clients. Now, Part of the after the product sale is preparation. What is it we're going to be doing next? And I've got this broken down into two parts. The preparation is broken down into two parts. Then we move into delivery and installation. 
preparing, I believe that we need to communicate really well with our clients. And that does mean repeat. You are going to repeat the same things you've already told them. Now, there's a good reason why I rec recommend repeating. And that's because our minds wander. When someone is talking to you, when someone is speaking uh, uh, in, in any form or fashion, something they say causes you to just wander for a little bit. And then something brings you back in. During those times when your mind is thinking about something, it could be the subject, but moving into it a little more deeply maybe. During that time, you're not giving 100% of your attention to whoever it is that's speaking. Therefore, those, your clients aren't giving you 100% all the time. Besides, they're not going to remember everything when they are. So therefore, it's a good idea to repeat. Let them know what it is that you're going to be doing and what it is you expect of them. So send email updates at each step of the process. At each step. I mean, even, even early on, the, the phone call that, you, that caused you to set up the, the design consultation, the, the planning session, an email. After the planning session, another email thanking them for it. And then another email that's confirming and, and uh, talking about what's going to be happening at the portrait session. And then one after the portrait session. And now one where we're talking about uh, at the end of the portrait session, it's thanking them and telling them what happens next what it is you're going to be doing and an estimate of how much time it's going to be. And if there's anything you want them or expect them to be doing in the meantime, then letting them know that. You're going to be processing these images. You're going to be making them just the way you want them. I call it fine tuning and then optimizing for the size and then sending that into the lab. Lab takes a day or two or however long it takes. In a rare instance, maybe it takes a bit longer, so make sure that things are progressing. But labs are amazing, especially the one that's here today, Digital Pro Lab. They take care of everything for you. You're not going to have to make sure that things are progressing at Digital Pro Lab. They will take care of that for you. Make sure you're doing everything you said you were going to do. Now, I'm going to go back into this next step with a lot more detail. This is an overview. When you do have those images back and they're done, they're ready to go. You're going to call and make arrangements for delivery. Now for you, this process may be different. I'm describing one person's point of view. I deliver my photographs to them. Again, I don't want to give them any more work. So I take those images, I package them up nicely. Again, we're gonna be talking about this in just a moment. And I deliver them to them. If there's a wall portrait there, then I am prepared to put it on their wall. So call when complete and make arrangements for delivery. Now, if they have a balance due, which for me is extremely rare, because I get paid at the end of the portrait selection consultation. It's usually a done deal. There are times though, when they want to, to make payment arrangements and I am open to that. But payment has to be made by delivery. I don't want to get to a point in time where I have delivered and installed their prints on the wall and then say, all right, I'm ready for the money. Nope, at that time I want everything to be happy. No potential tent situations. And besides, what if they don't have the money and you've already installed it? How's that going to make you feel? When you call to make arrangements and they owe money, make sure to mention what their balance is and what methods you accept. And then accept it right then and there over the phone. Now, if they say I'll pay by check and you're okay with paying by check, uh, then uh, I guess you can accept that on, on delivery. But most of my clients are, are paying by credit card. So therefore, this is kind of a non-issue. So I get that payment over the phone uh, and take care of it right then. So therefore, there are no problems when I'm showing up and with payment. It, it's, it's done. It's over. That part's completed. The next step is get everything in order. 
I recommend that you do this homework assignment. Create a checklist of all the things that you're doing after the sale. What are all the steps? Now, on the photography side and the Photoshop side, I create an art card that has their name on it. It has all the images that they've requested, any special, any special requests. And if that goes long, I turn it around and put it on the back, but not usually. I put the date that I have uh, accepted the order and I have a list of all the things that I'm going to be doing, the steps, the process. And there's a little check mark next to them. So when I'm done with that part, I check it off. I also put my initials and date it. That way I know when it was done. So that way I can see at a glance where everything's at. Now there's software programs that, that uh, will do that for you. I just do it the old fashioned way with paper because I've been doing it long before the, the software programs were available. Uh, how long before? Well, the first paid job I ever did was in 1983. So I'm hoping in your mind you're saying you don't look old enough, but you might not be. <laughs> yeah, first job I did was 1983 and I went full-time in 1991 after graduating from college with a degree in photography. So create a checklist of all the things that you're doing after the sale. Now, I think you should create a checklist of everything you're doing with a period at the end of that sentence. But this session is just about what happens after the product sale. So make a list, all the things that you're doing. Next, be prepared as far as how you're dressed, how you look. I think appropriate and respectful. Maybe you wanna to dress to impress, maybe. It depends. Make sure you're not going overboard in that area. Appropriate and respectful is what I recommend for clothing. Before you do go over to their home, make sure you have reviewed the client's information. Make sure you don't forget their names. No mom's name, no dad's name, know the kid's names, know the dog's name. Yeah, review that information. Make sure that when you see them in person, you can use their names. You've become friends with them. You've earned a good, strong relationship with them. You are like You're friends right. with them. And you know the names of your friends. So know their names. Have your client's contact information on hand just in case you need to reach them along the way. Anything can happen while you're driving. And of course, leave early. Don't allow traffic to be the reason why you're late. We know about traffic. Be early. And as far as arriving, arrive at when you arrive at someone's house, I believe in arriving about five minutes early, not 15, not 30, uh, not unless that's been planned for. Um, about five minutes ahead of time is about the right amount of time to show up and definitely on the dot at the latest. Now, I said I was going to come back to this part. This is the preparation, but this is the signing and the packaging. When you get the amazing prints back from Digital Pro Lab or wherever else you send your images, <laughs> by the way, there's a lot of good labs out there, but we like local labs and Digital Pro Lab does a lot for the San Antonio photography community. So of course, I'm going to say Digital Pro Lab. And there are several more steps still to come. Here are mine and here are some of the thoughts of why I choose to do them. I believe that artists sign their work or somehow identify it. If you go to a museum, do you expect to see in the bottom right corner the signature of the artist that painted it? Most of the time it's there. I've seen it on the other it's side as well, but it's usually there somewhere. In my opinion, this is just one guy's opinion. You don't have to share it. But in my opinion, if you're an artist and you're proud, then you sign it. If you're not proud, okay, don't sign it then. I understand. By the way, if you're not proud, why are you selling it? In my opinion, you sign your work. And not on a mat, on the work. Bottom right corner. Now, I sign in gold. And there's a bunch of reasons why I do that. One, it's just kind of cool to be able to say that you sign in gold. Um, but another, uh, it's kind of funny, I'm going to tell you a, a story that's happened only maybe five times. 
Um, so kind of rare, uh, but sometimes dad, and it's always dad, it's never the mom that makes this particular statement I'm about to say. On rare occasion, dad has commented about the price. Uh, so when I show the, the photographs at the portrait selection consultation, I have a projector and I show, show it on their wall in the place where it's going to be displayed. And I tell them the size. This, I, I, I'm excited about it, the, the, the energy's up, the, the room and it, the, the, the image is not on the wall yet, I present it, boom, there it is on the wall. I give them just a moment and watch their reaction because they're gonna have one. I love seeing their reactions. But then I say, this is my $5,000 size. Can you see this proudly displayed right here on your wall to enjoy for years to come? Now, I don't stop it at this is our $5,000 size because this is an emotional thing and, photogra and, and, and the price is kind of not on the emotional side, although $5,000 kind of is a lot. So maybe you maybe it does play on your emotions <laughs> but it's it's a logical thing um so it takes you out of the feelings of the image is is my thought on the emotion so i i say this is my five thousand dollar size can you see this proudly displayed on your wall for years to come now mom is thinking yes i can i can probably see this on my wall dad <laughs> every once in a while um now i've told them the price ahead of time but i don't know maybe dads aren't always paying attention Maybe it hasn't sunk in yet. But dad sometimes looks at me and says, what? Is it lined in gold? <laughs> and because I sign in gold, guess what I say? Yes. Yes, it is. Every single one of my prints is signed in gold. By the way, that takes him off guard. And so each one of the few times that it's happened, he didn't follow it up with anything. He just kind of said, oh, wow, this is um, this guy's serious. And, you know, my average sale was 3,800. So yes, less than my $5,000 size sometimes. But my best sale for a single family was 8,900. So yeah, one sale. You can do it too. Again, artists sign their work, in my opinion. Now, let me show you what I sign with. I'm going to stop the share real, real quick and uh, bring in the, um, my, the what I sign with. So this is Let's see, the Gold Rider pen. Can you see that all right? Or is it upside down? There we go. This is what I use. Ballpoint, heated pen. I just connect that to the wall and within five minutes, I'm able to sign the work. Now I'm also using uh, gold foil. So I put the gold foil down on the print and then I sign it. Uh, and uh, you may think, oh my gosh, what happens if you make a mistake? Well, if you make a mistake, then you're going to have to reorder it from Digital Pro Lab. Because <laughs> you, you, you just, so don't, don't make a mistake. Have I made mistakes? Yes, but I've done this so many times I don't anymore. I probably, you know, it's after, after a while you get pretty darn good. And, and besides, you can practice, you can practice without the print that you're going to be sending them. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a non-issue. Have I had to do it before? Yes, I've had to reprint before, but man, it's been a long time. And it's been very rare. But this is the gold rider pen that I use. Let me turn that around. You guys can see this, right? Jim. Yeah. Can you identify a source? It's called it's the Veach Company. How do you spell that? Uh, V-E-A-C-H. Hey, Jim. Yeah? What if your company name is not your personal name? 
Are you still signing it with your personal name? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, if, um, yeah, okay. If it's a one person business, oh, I guess I got to change this back around. If it's, if it's a one person business, it's just you doing the photography, you're not hiring out, then I recommend that you sign it with, you sign it. Um, however, if you have multiple photographers working with you, then a company name uh, and a logo instead is more appropriate. Now, how do you, how would I do that in that instance? I, I don't do it that way, but if I were to, um, then I would have a die made and I would have a press, a heat press, and I would press it into the uh, into that work. Um, and I used to do that um, back in 2000 through 2002, I think. Uh, I merged Landers Photography with Parish Photography, and so the name of that business was Parish Landers Photography. And because there were two of us, we didn't sign our work. We got a die made, and we pressed our logo into every print. Same place where I would have signed it. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Except for where do you get those die, the die made? Uh, the dies, uh, Javi, do you guys do that? Do you guys do uh, imprinting? No, sir, yeah, no, no, we do not. Oil imprinting? Um, sorry, I, I didn't know whether you did it or not, and I didn't mean to catch you off guard like that there are some labs that that do gold foil and printing uh, and, and um you can buy the product the the imprinting machine yourself uh and veach does sell that v-e-a-c-h veach does sell that product uh, and this this is their the, this is their cheapest product but uh right. they do sell those uh, and and, the, and they'll, they'll tell you where you can get those dyes made for them it's, man, it's okay. been 20 years since I've had a die made. Long, long time. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are, is, is yours uh, uh, just you, or will you have other photographers working with you? Just me for the time being. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's a good solution. In fact, there's, there's companies that, uh, uh, let's see, I don't know if Jennifer Jennings is still in, in business. Uh, but for many years, she did beautiful um, family portraits, and uh, she uh, she had a um, it was a oh, I guess a diamond shape with J J in it, uh, Jennifer Jennings J J, uh, and uh, she gold foil embossed that into every single print, uh, and that just made it identifiable. For those of you who remember Olin Mills they gold foil um, embossed. They, it was just, uh, it was that dye in, a, in gold foil. They pressed it into the print. Simple as that. I don't know if you guys remember that, but it has a, has a classic look and it identifies the print. Now there's other ways to identify the print, uh, but uh, uh, in fact, let me just tell you about that. So let me share the uh, the handout once again. So right here, identify the images with a number on the back. Uh, identify the image. So every single print needs to have something on the back. And so uh, let's see. Here's here's one from many years ago. I asked Robin to grab a print for me that had had our our information on the back, and I guess the first one she found was from 16 years ago. But that's cool. Let me uh, share that with you real quick. And is it focusing? Focus. Nope, not focusing. Why are you not focusing? I have an autofocus. Camera, there it goes. So it says copyright 2005, Landers Photography, San Antonio, Texas. And then the phone number and our, our website address and then uh, job number. Now this was the image that's on here is one of our stock photography images. And so it just says stock. And then it says image number. And then that was the image 
number that was there. But job number would would be um, we assigned each job a job number, and we wound up with what forty six thousand jobs over the years. Yeah. So uh, that number would have been you know forty six thousand one hundred and twenty three or whatever it was uh, in that in that space right here where it says job. Now for in two thousand five we just stamped that on with uh, and here's the. Here's the 2004 version of it. We just stamped this on the back of each print. Focus. There we go. That's how we did it. We just stamped this on the back of each. Be curious what the other side looks like. Well, there's really not much to see. Besides, it's old, old. <laughs> 2004. I can't believe I still have that. How did you find that? I'm asking Robin. Focus. Well, anyway, it focused the first time. Uh, so that's what we put on the back. Um, but we eventually got to where we just put stickers on it. Uh, be, uh, because uh, when we did, well, we just eventually did stickers. Uh, but either way, stamp or sticker on the back that ad identifies the, the job and the image number. That way, if they need to reorder, they can. And there's a lot of reasons why someone may need to reorder. Over time, you're going to, to uh, experience lots of different things with your clients. For instance, water damage or uh, fire or um, a tornado or whatever. There's, there's just things that cause them to need to reorder. But it could be as simple as somebody else wants a print in their house or they get a vacation home and they want that print in their vacation home. Make it easy for them to do business with you. The information's on the back of the print. So it's one of the many things we put on the back of a print. Another thing we put on the back of a print is our sticker. And let me show you our sticker. That's the sticker. And that's on the back of every single print. And it's pretty big. You can see my hand here. It's a big sticker. By the way, this one is on a gift bag. So if someone orders something that's uh, uh, smaller than an, uh, an eight by 10, like a five by seven, we put it in here with some tissue paper to make it pretty. Yep. Packaging. You want to wow them at every step of the of the process. You want them to have a shareable experience. Um, we we want our clients to get on on social media or talk to their friends and say, "You're not going to believe this. I just did business with the name of your photography company, and I was so impressed. And they not only did they do a good job. This person was nice and kind and, and caring. But they the package that was delivered to me with the prints and it was so pretty. I didn't even want to open it." that you want to have comments like that. Make sure that every step of your sales experience, of your client experience is a shareable experience. Give them a reason to share it. So we, um, we'd have boxes, and this is a, a mini box that we really didn't use much. The one we used the most often was the 11 by 14 or the eight by 10 box, which for whatever reason we can't find right now. And it's just a simple box. And we would <laughs> we would wrap it with this ribbon in our colors, gold and black. So that would be wrapped around it. And they would often tell us that, um, that it looked too pretty to, <laughs> to open, but they're so excited to see their photographs that they went ahead and did that. That's what I want to see. That's what I want them to do. And I will tell them every once in a while, I, I, can I use this for social media? Can I, can I film you unboxing this? Because that's kind of fun to watch. And then what do they say? Yeah, can you send that one to me too? Of course. We're giving them shareable experiences. Excellent stuff to do. Uh, if, um, if, if someone is just buying one five by seven, print. And then I have uh, these folios with our, our um, logo and phone and, and um, uh, website address. And we put them in the folios. 
So a bunch of stuff like that. Now, do you want to see how we used to do something? One of the things we did after the photography um, was we created a CD. We haven't done that since, I don't think it's been since 2011, but it's been a long time. But you can see the, the job number on that one is 47,538. So we've, we've done quite a few jobs over the years. By the way, we didn't start off at number one just in case you're curious. <laughs> uh, so any thoughts or questions about the packaging before I continue on? All right, so I want you to plan what it is you're going to be doing. So describe what you're gonna be doing to wow them with your delivery presentation. And then of course, do that. Brainstorm, what do you think would be cool for you to do? What's right for you? By the way, anything that's larger than eight by 10 or 11 by 14, I don't, I don't package it the same way. In fact, a lot of times I take it in whatever it is that the lab packaged it in. Or here's a suggestion. If you've got some sewing skills, then maybe make a felt bag in the in your color, whatever your color is, and then have your logo embroidered onto it and put your prints in that. That'd be a cool thing to take your prints to your customer in, your client. So carefully and beautifully package everything to show the value of your products and services. Now, let's talk about the delivery and the installation. I like to, again, arrive five minutes early uh, to their home. Now, if, if I'm not going to, to their home for some other thing, then I would actually want to be there a little bit earlier. But when it's to their home, five minutes. Um, make sure that your attitude is full of happiness, professionalism, and confidence, even if you have to fake it. Reminder, as a professional, your issues your problems, your concerns, your emotions, well, when you're with your client, those all become irrelevant. Yes, you have problems. Yes, you have concerns. Yes, you have all that. This does not devalue who you are or what problems you're experiencing currently. You turn those off though because this is their time. This is your client's time. You want to give them a shareable experience. You want them to want you around. And if you're showing that you're upset about something else, they may have empathy for you, but they're not gonna welcome that back into their home next time. You want an attitude full of happiness, professionalism and confidence, because this is not about you, but you are on the stage and in the spotlight. Everything should seem amazing and perfect if you can make it. Nothing's perfect. Because you wanna give your clients the experience they deserve. Now, you get to define what that is. How do you make it perfect? How do you make it amazing? How do you make it shareable? Plan all that well ahead of time and then do it. Now, when you do get there, I want you to build the base for an exciting and comfortable experience, greeting with enthusiasm, an appropriate amount of enthusiasm. Don't go crazy. What happens in the first few moments does shape that experience of this delivery and installation. They're excited to be getting this. They are. Make sure that they remain excited throughout the entire process. You're going to say things like, I am so excited to deliver these photographs to you. You're expecting them to be thrilled and they're going to be. Hand them the, uh, the loose prints in, in the box with the ribbon, allow them an opportunity to take a look at those so that they're coming up to the main event. And usually it is one appropriately sized photograph for their wall. 
And when I say appropriately sized, I don't like using the word big because it's not, it's appropriate for the space that it's going to go into. But it's probably way bigger than those loose prints they bought. Once they've gone through those images, then it's time to install it on their wall. You've brought your tools with you, whatever tools it is that you need in order to do that. Now, it's also possible that you hire somebody to do that. And I like to be there while it's going on. So there are installers to help out with this. You know, there's installers to install TVs. They can handle putting a photograph on the wall. Plus they have insurance for that kind of thing. By the way, if you have business insurance, you have insurance for that kind of thing too. So that may be your concern. I've heard this concern before of, well, you know, what about the liability? What if I, I break something when I'm in there? Yeah, yep, that could happen. And I usually ask them ahead of time that if there's anything there that's in the area that I'm going to be installing, if they would mind, if they would mind moving it so that I just don't have this as a problem. So what could be a problem though? I could mess up my own artwork and this has happened before. And in fact, I, I'll show you that real quick. bring this up. I'm going to show you a video of me doing an installation. If I can get it to stop. It paused. There we go. All right, so let me share that with you. If it'll let me, it's not in the list. I'll just share my screen. All right, you should be seeing this right now. And there's no sound because it's fast forwarded. But that's me taking down the images that were previously there that I had done and now putting up their new images. And yes, this is the kids' playroom. That's why you've seen all the toys. So this is us talking about the order and uh, what it is we're going to do and being silly and having fun, making sure everything's in the right place. <laughs> I'm gonna fast forward through the fast forward just so you can see, but here in just a moment, Something's going to happen to one of those prints. Oh, it didn't catch it. All right, so that print fell down on the right. And you can see right here that there's a, a, a dent in it, a cut. Yep, I had to reprint that image because I dropped it. Oh, um, you know, I've dropped things before, but it, I've never caused a problem like that before. So I, I went ahead and installed it and told them I was going to reprint it and then come back to them with the, the new one. Uh, and I didn't want to leave it uneven up there. Uh, so uh, that is this, this print, I did install it then, but then I came back later and, and gave them another one. And so I have this as an extra print somewhere <laughs> um, because of that little dent in it right there. So hopefully that was fun. I'm going to fast forward to the end. And by the way, you can probably see my, my laser up there. That's to make sure the tops are right aligned. So they're in the same spot. It's almost done. Just making sure everything's level. And yes, I do talk to my clients quite a bit, <laughs> as you can see. And now I'm just putting my stuff away. Yep. So 
Hope you enjoyed that installation. I have other ones that I could show you, but I thought that one was fun because that's the one where I dropped my print, had to reprint it. Yep, had to pay for it again. And maybe the lab would have given me a, a deal if I'd have asked, but it wasn't their fault. I made the mistake, so I was happy to pay for it. But uh, uh, so, you know, that kind of stuff can happen. And uh, it's such a small amount that, of course, I'm not going to report something like that to insurance. I'm just going to pay for it myself. Um, but uh, if I had dropped it and it, it knocked the TV off and that fell down, okay, now that's when I need to get my insurance involved. Uh, and they were telling, I, I told them that ahead of time and they said, uh, that's not a problem. It's an old TV. If you, if you drop it, then I get a new TV. That's, I'm good with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we had fun. installing and now this next part on here uh, let them know for sure that if there's anything i can do to make you thrilled i'm gonna do it what that's talking about is when i'm showing them their, their photographs or even before i remind them about my thrilled guarantee let me go over that real quick I have a thrilled guarantee, and that means that you are going to be absolutely thrilled, not satisfied. I don't want you satisfied. I don't want you telling your friends, yeah, it was okay. No, satisfied is for losers. I want you thrilled. I absolutely guarantee that you will be thrilled, not just satisfied, or I'll do whatever it takes to make you thrilled. Even if that means another session. And if I can't, I'm going to give you your money back. Before I go on, how do you guys feel about that thrilled guarantee? Any thoughts, comments? You scared about it? Would you do it? I'm not getting any reaction from you guys. Let's go to gallery view. Anyone commenting on that one? Anybody else have a thrilled guarantee? I'm all for it. <laughs> Good. Just, just in case, since I only got one of you commenting, I'm going to repeat it. Just in case you didn't hear it, I'm going to repeat my thrilled guarantee. I absolutely guarantee that you will be thrilled, not just satisfied or I'll do whatever it takes to make you thrilled. Even if that means another photography session. If I can't make you thrilled, I'm gonna give you your money back. That's the guarantee. Now, maybe you think someone's going to take advantage of you on something like that. Uh, Britt, you, you, you said you and I think the same way apparently. Um, she said, it's the only way to do business when you're providing a service. I wish more service providers had the same philosophy. Me too. <laughs> and occasionally I come across some who do, but that's, that, I don't think it's the norm. Because I don't see a whole lot of photographers who do this kind of thing. Now, I'm not saying that they don't give money back every once in a while. Occasionally this kind of stuff, that, that kind of thing happens. Uh, hopefully very rarely. Um, but because uh, giving money back is not a good feeling for anybody. And, but the reason I want this, I feel so strongly is for a bunch of different reasons. One, I have to convey confidence. And if this thrilled guarantee doesn't convey confidence, you give me a better way. Now, I don't think it's the only way. I think there's a lot of ways that you should convey confidence. I think a thrilled guarantee is just part of the group of things that convey confidence. But my thrilled guarantee applies anytime. Let's say the photograph's up on their wall and it's been sitting there for a week or two, a month. And they say, you know what? I don't like fill in the blank. I don't like the shade of the color of the sky. I'm going to fix it for you. I want you that confident in me. And yes, I'm giving you a real example, except it wasn't them requesting it, it was me. The wall that they had me install it on 
somehow reflected the it just reflected onto the color of the sky and it looked funny it didn't look funny when it was in my in, in my possession it looked right it looked good but i guess the color of their wall just reflected it and it made it look funny and so i said you know what i'm going to reprint this this is while i was doing the installation i'm going to reprint this and they said why this is fine and i said because this isn't the best that i could give you and I'm only giving you the best. Now, I'm not taking this away from you right now, if that's what you're thinking. No, I'm leaving this here. I'm just going to reprint it, and I'm going to come back out and switch it out when I'm done, when the, when the print's done. That was the first time they had ever done business with me. They've never even bothered to talk to another photographer since. Because who's going to do that? makes a difference you care so show it prove it does this cost you a little extra money yes but make sure you're charging enough where you can afford to do that kind of thing now let's talk about money real quick real quick the amount you charge for prints has almost nothing to do with the amount the lab charges for prints almost nothing now, I know some of you are thinking, well, maybe if I double the uh, whatever the, the lab charges, I double that and, and I, I, I've doubled my, my, my money. Um, or, or maybe I do three, three times or four times or five times. That's not how to do the pricing for your prints. You have an entire creative process. The lab is here for one little step of it. And they do a great job for that one little step. But they're only charging for the one little step. If the lab had to do all the steps you're doing, I guarantee you the price of that print would not be the little sliver that they charge you. It would be the full amount that you're supposed to charge. But for some reason, woo, it just slips most photographers' minds that the lab doesn't do anything except print what you gave them. But it took you hours to get to the point where they could do the thing that, that, caused, that, that, um, that they can do their, their step. You have to charge for the entire creative process, not just the one little sliver plus a little bit. The entire creative process is what you are charging for. My prices include enough of a profit where I can reprint it again and I'm still fine. Not a problem. If the lab charges $10 for something and you've charged 20, if you have to reprint all that work you did, you've just not made any money at all. None. In fact, you've lost money because you have value and you didn't get anything for that. That's a little bit on the pricing side. Now, I see a question here in the, uh, in the chat. Uh, have you uh, have you had a change request due to family remodeling the home? New paint, new color. Uh, so now picture needs new color scheme. Um, yes, but uh, it's always been a new session. And that's actually pretty rare, but it's always been a new session. No one's ever wanted me to just fix the the old print. They, when they've re, when they've done remodeling or repainting or something like that, they've just decided to totally do a new photo session. So you're in the spirit of the question, you may be saying, what if they ask that? Um, I'm going to suggest that they do a new session. And the reason is because their clothing probably won't match the new color scheme. Let's do a new session. Uh, in fact, I'll even not charge you for the, the session fee. You'll just pay for the print. And if you don't like any of them, you don't pay anything. That's probably what I would do in that instance. Thank you for asking that. That was Britt. Thank you, Britt. All right. So uh, um, I like to photograph the installation. That way I've got something to show. I use it for marketing purposes. So um, there's, I have a couple of thoughts and philosophies on this. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I'll set my camera up, my cell phone, 
and just point it in the direction of where I'm going to be doing the installation. And, and a lot of times I'll do that fast one, like you, like I showed you just a little while ago, um, where it's uh, it, it's not showing that entire process because it might take me a while, um, but it's showing it fast to where it's perfect. You can see it really well. Uh, and that's really all I need for that. But I also want to photograph it completed. And so I, once I have gotten the video of me doing the installation, then I take it off of the tripod and, uh, and just photograph the installation, the finished product. And then I ask the family to get in front of it or maybe off to the side and uh, look straight in, into the camera and smile because they're proud of this. So there's three basic ways to show off your work. Good, better, best. Good is just showing your pretty photographs. Every photographer can do that. Better is showing it in use. How are your clients going to be using this photograph? For me, it's for the wall. So therefore, I'm photographing the, 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 my photograph on their wall. That's better. But what's best? Showing it on their wall with them in front of it looking thrilled. And yes, I tell them ahead of time I'm going to be doing this. That way they can address whatever they feel is appropriate to dress for that photograph. But I tell them so that they're aware this is what I do. And they're happy with it. If they weren't happy with it, they wouldn't have hired me to begin with. Because I tell them during the planning session, even the phone call before, I'm telling them everything that's going to be happening throughout this creative process. And they hired me because they like it. The process. I guess me too. Hopefully. Who knows? <laughs> but they know what's coming because of the communication. I also want to tell them multiple times how much I've enjoyed working with them. That's part of this. It's not just showing your work. It's not just um, the installation, it's that communication, that interaction with them. They did a good job. Again, this was a collaborative work between them and me. If they weren't collaborating, if they weren't working well with me, I wouldn't be able to cr produce the, the beautiful photograph that I did. It would be less than I had my best. And I don't want that. You don't want that. So I'm telling them, many times throughout the process, not just at this stage, how much I've enjoyed working with them. Now I'm observing, I'm watching, I'm listening. I'm going to learn a lot by doing this. I'm listening to their inflections. I'm paying attention to their body language. I want to know if there's a problem, whether they're saying it or not, because sometimes I can see it in their face. They want to be nice. So they're not saying something. Doesn't work with me. I want to be told what's bothering you. If you keep it to yourself, you're going to bother me. You know, you may be thinking, I don't want to bother him. You're bothering me by not telling me what the problem is. I can't fix a problem that I am unaware of. So I encourage them to allow me to become aware. Even if it's slight. There's times I say, well, it's such a small thing. It's, you know, my, the, um, uh, one of the buttons is halfway buttoned. I've seen that many times. I catch, I catch buttons unbuttoned, that, but halfway button ones, that's only happened once, I guess, but still, they said that the, the button, it's just kind of bothering me. No problem. I can fix that. By the way, they normally always catch that during the portrait selection consultation. This is almost never an after a print thing. So I may be giving you examples of when I've reprinted, but that is extremely rare. It almost never happens. Yes, it happens. And I am thrilled and happy to do it because it gives me an opportunity to build more trust with them. I love that opportunity. I don't like having to pay for it again, but I love the opportunity of building trust. I love the opportunity of making me the only photographer in their minds in every single opportunity and every single thing that comes up is that opportunity. Now, yes, I like to visit with my clients and talk about how their day is going and, and what they've done recently and what they're proud of. Yeah, I like to do all that kind of stuff. But I also 
don't want to waste too much time. I want to waste a little bit, but not too much. You've planned what you're going to do. Get in there, get it done, and get going. Don't linger. Don't overstay your welcome. You know what I mean. Now, following up, you've got this print on the wall. You've photographed it. You photographed the, the family in front of it. Once you're driving away and you're far enough away where they're not going to see you, I think you should stop and write them a thank you message, a letter, a, a note card. Write down something nice. You enjoyed working with them. And whatever, maybe some comment that was funny you want to share um, and say you look forward to, to do bus doing business with them in the future. And you feel like you've really created a friend. And drop that in the nearest mailbox. That way it gets to them tomorrow or the next day, but really quickly. I also think uh, that in, within three days to a week, call them and find out how they're enjoying their photograph on the wall. Because if there's something that's bothering them, they can share it with you then. But they may think, that's too small to call. I want to know. I can fix problems when I'm aware of them. And they may think, well, it doesn't rise to the level of problem. It is to me. Here's your homework. Describe what the delivery is from your client's point of view. That's where I want you to start. Not from your point of view, but your client's point of view. Make it ideal. Make it clear what's going to happen and why you're doing it in the way you're going to be doing it. Why is it beneficial to them? And now I want you to, number two, write your steps for your delivery process from your point of view. What are all the things you're going to do? I like putting little check boxes so that I can see where I'm at in the, st in the stages. What are you going to do? Make a plan. Number three of what you're going to do for the delivery, but be flexible. Having a plan is a confidence booster. What are you going to do for the delivery? Number four, create a checklist of the items that you need to do the delivery and installation and use this every time you prep. So therefore you have what you need at the session and you leave with the things that you, that you have. Um, for instance, when I'm doing an installation, I have tools. I have a toolbox, a framing toolbox. Uh, I call it a framing toolbox because it has mostly framing stuff in it, but uh, it's an installation toolbox. Everything I'm going to need to install my prints on their wall. So create a checklist of all those things you're going to need. Any thoughts or questions about, about what we've talked about so far today? Hey, Jim, um, I have an Apple product, so I don't see that handout. Could you put those homework steps up on the screen? Mm -hmm. Sure can. Let's see, share. In fact, I will put them. In the chat. You see that in the chat? Uh, let me look. Yes. You do? Okay. I, thank you. Cool. So I want to thank you guys once again for coming to this episode of the Portrait Profits Show, sponsored by Digital Pro Lab and Landers Photography School. You know, I wanted, I want to let you know, uh, there's a large investment of time that goes into the creation of these lessons. Please, although you're getting this for free, you're not being charged. I want you to pay in a different way. I want you to pay with kind comments on social media or encourage others to be here. It's to your advantage to share what, share with every photographer you can on every social media platform you're on, because if everyone is lifted up, then everyone starts selling their product and service at, at an amount that gives both you and them the opportunity to earn a living. Keeping this a secret only keeps photographers uninformed and selling their work at a price that is so low that they can't make a living out of it. And they've taught their clients that that's what's right, that that's the norm. But if you can't make a living at it, then it is not the norm. It's less than a living wage. 
And people are talking about that and have been talking about that for many years about minimum wage. I can mathematically prove that there are more photographers making less than minimum wage than making even a dollar or two more. There are a lot of photographers who are making less than minimum wage. And yes, I can mathematically easily prove it. Not today. Sharing what you've learned here lifts the entire photography community. So I encourage you, say some kind words, let Javi and I hear them, but even more so, share this with other photographers. When other photographers are doing these kinds of things, when they have a price that's appropriate to actually make a living, this causes the entire photography community and our clients to see those prices as normal instead of what they might say them, see them as right now, price gouging. We want them to see what the real price is, what causes us to make a living wage or a really good living. That's what we want them to see. And the more we inform our fellow photographers, the better. You may think keeping this a secret, it's a good thing. This is, I get some advantage here that they don't have. This is not an advantage. It's a, the advantage is if everyone knows this and we all keep doing better and growing, there's where the advantage lies, not in keeping information from other people. So can I count on you guys to share this with other photographers? Can I get a thumbs up maybe? Thanks, Javi. <laughs> Uh, I was looking for the button. <laughs> you know, awesome. I, real quickly, Jim, if I can kind of hop in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can kind of attest to what you're saying. Uh, you know, part of my job here at the lab is that uh, I work with a lot of our, our new photographers who are uh, maybe have never printed before uh, and are trying to get, uh, you know, set up with a lab. And a lot of the conversations that I have, uh, I think a lot of these photographers, uh, it's, it's very eye opening for them. Uh, to see just exactly, you know, how much they need to be, uh, you know, making per week um, in order to keep themselves afloat. Um, I think a lot of them are approaching it from the perspective of a somebody who's doing this as a side hustle, you know. And, and if it's just if it's just extra money, then yeah, you know, a three hundred dollars session, that's great. That's three hundred dollars that you that you didn't have before. Um, but if that's something that's going to be paying your bills, uh, it's very very different. And so, like Jim said, uh, you know, if you get a chance to, to share this, um, the more this knowledge, you know, gets disseminated, like he was saying, you know, the, the more normal this will become, uh, you know, it's going to be less and less. In-person sales for a lot of these photographers are making the jump from, uh, you know, side hustle to, to primary source of income, um, you know, showing these prices is very intimidating for a lot of people because, like Jim was saying, there's so many people holding the market down, but the more that we do this, the easier it'll be. You won't be the, uh, the oddball who, who, you know, charges, uh, you know, four figures for photography. It'll just be what it's expected for quality, uh, service. And so, um, like, like Jim was saying, you know, I, I encourage you to, to share this and, um, let's all together really uplift, uh, the community. Yeah. Thank you very much, Javi. And real quick, uh, I think, Bob, I, I got your message. Um, if you want to just shoot me your email in the chat, I'm not sure if you saw my reply. Um, you know, shoot me your email and I can get you that, that catalog uh, as well as give you a little more uh, information on that monitor match. So. Okay, we will do. <laughs> uh, again, I want to encourage you guys to uh, take a look at the E3 program uh, that starts in two weeks from tomorrow. And uh, this is uh, something that is, man, if you're serious, this is the program for you. Uh, I'm going to help you program. and, and every step of the way. Um, Miguel, were you about to say something? It is an amazing program. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. So it is for low volume portrait photographers. So if you're a sports photographer, it's not that you won't get something out of this. You will. It's just not the right, it's not geared for you. So it's kind of like um, if, you know, a, a screwdriver is made for screwing in screws, but you could turn it around and use it as a hammer. Yes, you could. And so could other, could other photographers get something out of this program? Of course they can. 
but this tool is specific to portrait photographers who want to make a good living with low volume. And low volume is kind of self-described, but um, it's usually five or less in a month, but it could be as many as five sessions a, a week. But it's usually those who just want to do a handful of sessions, one, two, three, four, uh, five a, a month. That's generally what we're talking about. Um, but then earn really good income uh, with that. And like I said, I, I have an, an average of $3,800 for a family portrait sale. So how many of those do you need before you start bringing in an income that causes you to replace the income that you're making in a full-time job? For a lot of people, it's not that many. For some, it's one or two in a month. That's easy. So I can help you do that. I've helped many people do that. And thank you, Miguel, for saying something cool about the program. I appreciate that. Um, but I think the best thing to do is uh, just complete this short form over here on the side. Give me your name, uh, your email, your phone. And, and um, I, I want to know that you're serious about this. But you, th this phone call or Zoom, e either way, um, is just about finding out who you are, what you're all about, what... Uh, what is important to you and is this the right tool for you? I'm going to know pretty quickly whether this is the right tool for you. And if it's not, I'm going to suggest another tool or just tell you that it's not. Um, but you owe it to yourself to at least find out, is this beneficial to you? So, so go to that, uh, that web page and I'll put it back. I'll put it again in the, in the chat. I encourage you to go to that web page and, and sign up. And again, you're not signing up for the class. You're signing up just to talk about it. Hopefully there's no intimidation in just talking about something. Yeah, I can understand putting money down because yeah, this, my classes other than this aren't free. I, I like making an income. I like making my house payment and, and eating. Uh, yeah, I like those things. <laughs> so yeah, not everything's free, but you could, you wouldn't expect that of me, but most people with their first sale will make probably double what they're paying for the class with just one sale. So therefore, in my opinion, once I've shared this with you, you're going to think this is one of those no-brainer kind of classes. I need this. This is for me. So I encourage you, click on that link, take a look at it, and then sign up for it. Janice already did. Thanks, Janice. So anything else that we need to share during this, this episode? Because if not, then I'm going to close this out. Did you have anything, uh, anything more, Javi? I was thinking you, you said what you needed to. Okay, good. Yeah, no, like I said, that was it. Um, like I said, for anybody else who's interested in, in uh, you know, getting uh, access to that pro pricing catalog, um, you know, give us a call uh, and just ask to speak to me. Uh, or if you have some time in the chat, you know, shoot me an email. Um, and I'd love to get you guys uh, some more information on that and, uh, you know, see if it's going to be a fit for, for y'all. So uh, again, Jim, thank you for hosting this every, every week. Uh, we, we really uh, love being able to, to help bring this to everybody. Of course. Thank you for saying that. And you guys put on your calendar next Monday at noon. I hope to see you um, for Landers Photography School and Digital Pro Lab. This is Jim Landers bringing you the weekly Portrait Profit Show giving you evolving content awareness and even fun to the business side of photography. We provide helpful information, step-by-step -step processes, how-to articles, and action steps that will help you with the struggles you deal with now so that you are consistently realigned to the path that leads to the success you deserve. Thank you for being here. See you next week.